Don't forget to subscribe! <laughs> hey everyone, this is Bubba Got to Phoenix. <laughs> so let's get the show on the road. This video will be discovering the facts on why Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters is an important show on Kids WB and for Kids Entertainment slash Konami Cross Media. First things first. Let's get on to Natalie's experience with the video with the series itself. <laughs> From my perspective, I think that the first season of Yu-Gi-Oh! was basically amazing and the duels actually were very entertaining and they actually made me think that whenever you duel, you always have friends to stick by your side. Kazuki Takahashi's magnum opus actually was so mem memorable and this reveal was also a tribute to the Late great Matty Blastine, who was the second voice in the app before Jay Carter Cathcart and after Nathan Price, and the original Solomon before Wayne Grayson took her place. Her Lieutenant Surge voice was used for Mark Thompson's Jira from Zexel. Sadly, she passed away in December 2008 in her sleep from diarrhea complications. Oh. <laughs> this is going to be a big one. We're all going to have to work together on this. Ah, spoiler alert! Did you know that? Despite the 4Kids Entertainment version getting criticized and a claim for edits and changes, here are some highlights. Replacing the background music to suit a western demographic. Example, darker, more Hollywood removing tracks, sounding tracks in contrast to much more eastern score of the original Japanese soundtrack. Removing all references to blood. Reworking the plot in certain parts of numerous episodes and story arcs, mostly for censorship and reasons, but sometimes for dubbing reasons if known. Removing all instances of weapons like guns and knives, which are often pre prevalent, and removing scenes where two or more characters are fighting, removing or obfuscating at many references to religion, such as the pentagram or hexagram. The ancient and immensely powerful seal of Orikampos, the fantastic version of the actual occult symbol, the universal hexagram, popularized by Aleister Crowley, continues to play in a central role in many episodes. Other occult references have remained. Removing or rewriting scenes where characters die or are in real danger of death. In the English version, characters are instead threatened with the possibility of going to the Shadow Realm. Or in some cases, they are captured, to put it that way. I guess you got a point there. Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything explained in his Excel changes that he explained that kidnapped or exiled means or implies that they have died and Weevil's body disappeared to the Shadow Realm when Ironheart and Chris failed to save him, and Alistair's brother Mikey is still was captured by darts when Gozaburo Kaiba had taken him. Removing scenes where characters make obscene gestures like the middle finger, which was originated in Rome. Editing scenes where a female or sometimes male character or dual monster appears to be nude. Or might be wearing something that's highly too revealing. Changing the character's behavior, rare occasion. And no, it's not Ned Flanders syndrome or flanderization, to put it in extent. Removing, removing any kind of references that could be accused of causing children to develop bad habits. Truancy, for example. To get around FCC rules concerning advertising and shows as well as to make the show more marketable in non-English countries. All the cards in the show have been painted over to feature only the card illustration, card element, and attack defense and level rank of the card if, a monster, if it is a monster card. And Domino City is set in North America. Kids WB also edited episodes 4 and 5, and later episodes 14 and 15, fusing those episodes that were originally two part episodes into half hour episodes. Four kids did dub them separately, but they were only seen in other countries and on DVDs. Later, 
Win 4 Kids TV rebroadcasted the series, they were eventually aired episodes 4 and 5 separately. And this is the longest running series with 224 episodes. 236 with perhaps a long series is counted. Yuri Masayuki's transformation into Yami Yuki in English anime is seen as though transforming is added. Although the series continues from the point in the manga where the Toei anime ended, it's actually a reboot with differences in continuity, such as Yuki's first encounter with Kaiba and Chei. What is it, my turn again? Don't worry, Akari, you'll get it eventually. The US version of the anime was originally supposed to air and premiere in the 15th of September, but Kids WB delayed it to the 29th of September due to the September 11, 2001 attacks in New York City's World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and Shakespeare, Pennsylvania. That just makes no fucking sense. I mean, it's just bullshit. Yeah, it was one of the worst things that ever happened to our country. But anyway, in the 4 Kids Entertainment version, Yami Merrick's voice starts out distorted but low-pitched. This is the same voice he had of the first time he appeared in Merrick's childhood. However, by the time of the quarterfinals, his voice had gained higher pitch. This is probably due to Konami using Pro Tools to make Jonathan T. Ross's voiceover laugh at each other and added a phaser on Audacity. And this is also done to Inferno on Soul Calibur 4, aka Nightmare. Also in Season 2, the colors are a bit brighter due to the Masters having a difficult contrast. A scene is up episode 57 for 121. No! Now shut your bitch ass up! In episode 89, Yami Merrick's voice which was originally much deeper in the episode compared to the others when it aired on Kids WB, but on the DVD release, his voice has pitched higher to make it sound more consistent with other episodes, yet in the recap, in the following episode forgets to edit it, using the deeper voice. Rebecca is a lot better in season 4 and season 5, and she is... Actually less bratty than she is in season 1. She sold her stuffed velvet bear and got glasses and became a child prodigy genius when she was 8 when she debuted in and is 10 years old of Waking the Dragons, Duel the Lost Souls, and Grand Championship to Honor the Duel. She's the same age as Chidi Yusa's girlfriend Hotaru Tomoe, aka Eternal Sailor Saturn from Sailor Moon Crystal Series. And much in a sudden, Chidi Yusa from Sailor Moon Classic and Eternal when she gets the Adaptational nice guy approach. Rebecca and Taya have a rivalry between Yuki and Vivian too. And also, check this out! I win you talk! Let's do <laughs> Now let's do this! <laughs> she knows how to start a battle and she's like Allison, aka your muse from Sweet Pretty Cure. <laughs> Hex's letter shows a montage of characters in the final session's rap party from episode 220 to 224. Everyone was sad that Yu-Gi-Oh! and Sonic X came to a close, and even the cast came to dinner to celebrate. And to make sure that it was most likely a fantastic event to look forward to. You've finally done it, Yugi boy. Everything I spent my life creating has been leading up to this. From the moment I received the Millennium Eye, <laughs> to the moment I recreated the ancient shadow games in the form of duel monsters. It was fate's hand guiding me to set the stage for the Pharaoh's final journey home. But I wasn't the only one led by fate. Every person the Pharaoh encountered along the way was destined to play a role in his journey. And I'm willing to bet most of them didn't even know it. But each individual, no matter how utterly clueless, was a necessary piece needed to complete the puzzle of the Pharaoh's life. Be they weird fishermen duelists, or annoying mousy little girls, 
All of these people have one thing in common. Each one is connected by a young man named Yugi Boy and that mysterious alter ego of his. And not only did these individuals help Yugi, but in turn, Yugi touched each of their lives as well. Hey, not bad! You surprised me there. That was pretty fun! Oh yeah! Mario! Ho <laughs> ho! Thanks for the letter, Maxi! And Tang Gardner is a pun on Tea Garden and Jen Gardner, and my Valentine is being a play on my Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> You serious? Hello, hello. It has pretty much the truth. And in fact, Tatlumas uses a British accent for the good Bakura and American accent, a Giovanni voice for the Yami version. As for you, Kyle, the movie lets explain its canonicity. The movie can be considered to take place between Yu Gi Oh! episodes 144 and 145 between the third and fourth seasons, following the conclusion of the Battle City Finals, but before waking the dragons. A news report follows that. Movie's title sequence makes clear that the Battle City Finals have recently only, only been concluded, and Yugi has all three Egyptian god cards, which will be stolen for him at the start of the Waking of the Dragons chapter. Further proof of this is when Mai showed a look of disdain upon seeing Yugi on the news, foreshadowing her story in the following arc and wearing a white bearing of her signature purple outfit. The dub series had Tristan make reference to the movie's events a few episodes later in an episode. 148, and Joey will do so once again in episode 202. And to be honest, Alistair, Valen, and Raphael's personality are all something in common. They actually did have a troublesome past in their lives, but after the following duels in the Battle City chapters, they eventually had a chance to redeem themselves because those duels actually taught them some important things in life. Since we got through the facts of the show in the Max Redemption Arc Part 2, more facts, here is something a lot more interesting that you should know. Ironically enough, despite her reputation as a professional duelist, she lost all of her on-screen duels in the anime. So Vivian's personality and appearance is similar to that of Mei Lin Rei, the first cousin of Shoran from the... Anime Card Captors 2000, which is another anime involving cards, which we'll review sooner or later. Her deck also reflects Nailing's passion for fighting. She also resembles female fighter Chun Li from the Street Fighter franchise, similarly to Street Fighter, who resembles the Street Fighter character Fei Long and was playing a game similar to it. And also, in the second episode of Yu Gi Oh! Arc 5, there is a girl in the crowd that eventually resembles Vivian. She's prettier, more mature, <laughs> sexier, and smarter. Actually, she's the cutest girl in season 5 along with Rebecca. And Allison said gave a happy Halloween message. Take a look. <laughs> Hi Gabe, it's Viv. I bet you thought you were never going to hear from me. And I have to admit, it has taken me a really long time to leave this message. But you know, COVID has taken the passage of time to a whole new dimension. I mean, every year feels like a week long. Or is it every week feels like a year long? Anyhow, I figured I'd reach out to you on one of my favorite days of the year, Halloween. I just love seeing all the kids dressed up like witches and ghosts and skeletons and like their favorite anime characters, like Yugi. He's so dreamy. Anyhow, Gabe, I hope you're getting dressed up and out there celebrating, and I hope you get way more tricks than treats. But whatever you do, don't eat too much candy. Oh, who are we kidding? That's exactly what I'm going to do as soon as I sign off. I'm going to eat all the candy I want. So, signing off for now. Happy really, 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 really belated birthday. Toodaloo! Woohoo! I got it! Thanks, Allison! I lost a few life points for sure, but I'll like never ever lose a beat! This party's about to go crazy! One of the monsters has a Super Smash Bros. Melee voice clip, the Donkey Kong. If 
third sound ideas from his taunt giant punch and heavy enough back scream. <laughs> played Super Smash Bros. Melee, you might recognize that taunt. Now you know! Now we all know why Yu-Gi-Oh! is the best anime that was part of the boom in the 2000s. Yes, and overall it was indeed a perfect anime that was part of the anime boom that kicked off with Kids WB, Toonami, Sailor Moon, TBZ, Digimon Digital Monsters, and Pokemon the series anime. Now we're very aware that we're going to review Generation X and Five Dragons and Zexel to complete the Kazuki Takahashi involvement. We all hope you enjoyed the video, and remember, keep getting your game on! Thank you so much for watching, everyone! What do you think? If you appreciate it, please be sure to super smash that like button. And be sure to follow my social media platforms in the description below and the Live Lights fandom channels. Please be sure to leave a comment below and please give us your open minded thoughts because we here at Team Life Lights Fandoms do not condone harassment, violence, or trolls aloud, or otherwise, <laughs> Red Hellic from Comedy Central's The Renan Stimpy Show will haunt you down till the ends of the Shadow Realm. Please be sure to subscribe to our videos and click the notification bell. You'll never miss a video the second it goes live on YouTube and Google. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye <laughs>